Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Daniel Mendez. I'm a member of the VTC committee and the co-host of this workshop. It is my pleasure to be here with Marie Whitehead. And on behalf of the VTC committee, it's my pleasure to introduce her workshop, Cotter's Leading Change Process in the Move Online, in today's last and final workshop of to the VTC. Uh, Marie is a language acquisition teacher, grade level leader, and MUN director at the International School of Ho Chi Minh City. After completing her studies in education and languages, her latest endeavor is an MBA in educational leadership, uh, where her thesis has led her to reach to research the move to online learning. Combined with change management models from the business world, she and her co-author Susan Buzan have investigated change strategies for collaboration and communication when moving from face-to-face -to, -face to online learning. Welcome, Marie. Thank you, Dania. Okay, welcome everybody. I'm going to share my screen so you can see actually what we really be talking about and I give you a little bit of an introduction um, of um, what this is actually, yes. So as you can see, uh, the topic is Carter's Eight Steps for Leading Change for Online Learning. And um, yeah, as Daniel said, I'm Marie. Uh, my, la my latest endeavor was an MBA in Educational Leadership. And that's where this whole inside topic came from. Um, so I've prepared a little Prezi. Let's see if it works. Well done. Yep, um, Sorry about that. Let's see. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me just walk you through uh, actually what what is going to happen um, today in this presentation. Um, once actually this works. Um, sorry about that. Um, it's always those um, cha the, those challenges that are coming up. <laughs> um, I'm just going to reload the page quickly. So um, just bear with me for a second. Oh, here we go. There we go. Um, so the Carter's model, actually, we, my friend and I, Susan Buzan, um, we looked at um, what we actually could be doing for our master's thesis. Um, and we found out, and that's where we are right now. So our background is actually um, the two of us, Susan and myself, um, we are both secondary school teachers at the international schools. Um, Susan was in Hong Kong and now she has moved to Australia and unfortunately is not able to present today here with me together. Um, but uh, she's the co-author of uh, this thesis. Um, we are both students at the, um, at the Tampere University in Finland and we have just recently finished our MBA in Educational Leadership and graduated yesterday actually to be precise, so yeah, yeah for us. <laughs> um, we decided actually that um, our research was going to be um, on online learning it was conducted throughout the COVID-19 pandemic uh, between February 2020 and October 2020. So it was quite a long time of um, data collection. And um, yeah, the thesis was our goal and we have finished it now in January. And now I would like to present one of the parts of the thesis. It's only 30 minutes. And um, yeah, the thesis, the whole entire presentation will be longer for the whole inside thesis. So um, the one part should be enough. And the one part is actually Carter's change model. So um, if we go now um, to um, what we're going to be doing today. So um, we're gonna look at first what Carter's model actually is, and we're gonna look at other change management models. Then we're gonna look at the data collection um, how everything has worked, the, the, the people that uh, participated and so on, then you are going to a little bit explore what this is about. And after you explored it to have a better idea to have a little dive in, um, I'm going to be showing you our results um, that, um, that we actually found out and that we present in our thesis. Um, I have some references at the end of the presentation. The link will be going on the chat in the Wuba uh, app eventually. And then towards the end, uh, hopefully we will have about five, seven minutes for uh, question and answer answers. Um, you can contact me, you can uh, leave me any comments and so on. So it's more like a little bit of a research based presentation, um, but I hope you still can take something out of it. Um, so what is Carter's change model? The definition, it is um, when you want to go, if you want, if you would like to Google it, it's called Carter's Eight Steps for Leading Change. 
and it's one of the leading change management models uh, in the business world, one must say. It came, it came from Carter's practice in helping companies implement change. And by implementing change, it means not small changes, but large changes. It is a linear model, so um, the eight steps should be used one by one, one, one after the next one. Um, however, in the new updated emergency model that came out 2020 during the pandemic, um, Carter has rephrased it a little bit and um, is also now open to using the steps at the same time or um, going back and forth in between the steps. So um, we will be working and we will be looking at the, at the newer model at this point. So when we talk about those eight steps, what are those? Um, each step um, has a name. So um, the first step is create a sense of urgency. The second step would be build a guiding coalition. Third step is forming a strategic vision and initiatives. Um, then we enlist a volunteer army. Afterwards, we enable action by removing barriers. We should be generating short-term wins, um, sustaining acceleration, and then at the end, would be the institution of change, um, of the change process. So um, in those eight steps, actually, um, as I said, they were used, um, first of all, linear, but now actually in the newest emergency update, um, emergency model update, um, they can be actually used backwards, forwards, and so on. Okay, so why Carter and um, what other models are there? So there's quite a few other models out there that we could have used as well. Um, however, um, we decided to go for Carter because it was the most, um, the easiest to, to, to look at in an educational context. Um, a lot of those models are used, or most of those models are used in business. And um, for us, the important thing was to actually find, um, find something where we can merge the business idea with the education idea, because this Masters of Business Education, business administration is actually a first one in um, educational leadership. So that's why. So other four models that, um, that are quite common that um, you might have heard about already is Levin's three-step model. It's quite easy as well. It's um, unfreeze. So we unfreeze the, cu the current situation. We make the move for the change and then we, free we refreeze when the change is finished. Uh, McKinsey 7S model is another one that we had looked at. Um, in the, it's a little bit more circular. So in the middle of the model is the shared values. And then around the shared values, um, the changes happen all around shared values and they're happening in the structure, in the systems, in the style, in the staff, in the skills, in the strategy. So it's um, very similar to Carter, but not linear, but um, circular. The Senga systemic model is um, quite an easy one when you look at it. It's um, you start small, you grow steadily and you don't plan everything. So um, a, a lot of what has happened during the pandemic, I think was probably following more this model. Um, however, the start small was obviously not possible most of the time. And um, Beckett and Harris um, made a change formula that we can use during the, any time during the, the process, the change process. So it's a little bit more on a smaller scale. Okay. So um, the data collection, when we look at, um, our research questions, the data collection analysis, the participants. Um, this is what we actually looked at exactly in our thesis. So we had three research questions, um, and we are only be we will only be talking about the question number three uh, in this presentation because otherwise it will be way too long and um, cover way more than thirty minutes. Uh, so our first one was the challenges and opportunities for educators during the uh, move to home based learning. And the question number two was how has home-based learning changed communication and collaboration in teaching and learning? And then uh, our third question was actually which sections of the Carter's eight-step process for leading change are most suitable for moves to home-based learning? And that's the question and the, the data that I will be presenting to you today. Okay. So the structure and the methods. In uh, our background was actually a semi-structured qualitative study with a thematic analysis. So what does this mean is, um, we um, structured it uh, partly it's qualitative, so um, it's not based on quantity or the, um, numbers, but uh, it's more based on subjectivity, subjectivity and interviews. Um, and it's based on a thematic analysis. So we had staff take surveys last year, and um, we looked at those staff surveys to narrow down the topic to something that is interesting to everybody. 
um, and that um, lots of people were actually involved in. So that's where you got to communication and collaboration. And um, then in the in the staff survey, we asked if people would like to volunteer for interviews. And those interviews were then the data collection, the, the main data collection for this third research questions, actually. Um, the interviews were seven open-ended questions. They were quite short. Um, they were all um, uh, in themed blocks. So the block number two was about Carter. So we um, attached them to the research questions. And the length was about 20 to 45 minutes. All of them were audio recorded and transcribed. Uh, what we did afterwards was we took the transcriptions, we looked at themes that came up, and um, we then um, put those themes into tables and saw and looked at what kind of themes were the most prevalent ones. And I'm going to present you eventually with the data that we found on um, Carter um, in this in the, those chart in the, those tables. Um, who were the participants in the end? So for those interviews. It was 16 educators from two international schools. Um, they came from the, as volunteers from interview, for interviews from the preliminary survey. And the most important for us in choosing those um, volunteers was that we needed a varied sample in, from age, gender, experience levels, and roles in schools. So we have in those 16 educators, we have um, women and men. We have um, people that are, um, that have different experience levels. So we have um, quite novice teachers and we have quite experienced teachers. And we have teachers that, um, that are younger, teachers that are older. And then we also have teachers that have different roles in the school. So admin roles um, and only admin, admin roles attached to teaching loads and so on. So that was the most important for us to give, get a good overview of, um, of everything. Okay, so now it's up to you. Um, check Carter out. So we talked a little bit about the, the eight, eight steps. Um, we talked also um, about what they are. What I would like you to do right now, so I made a Padlet, you can actually scan the QR code or you can just go on the link. The link is also on the Uber app in the chat function if you'd like to go. And uh, I would like to have two questions answered on the, on the Padlet. So I'm gonna open it up over here. Um, I put down over here one more time the steps. The steps used, the important steps and then maybe also if you get an idea about what kind of steps were missing from those steps like what did you think so all of us have been through this um change to online learning um some of us are still there some of us have been going back and forth some of us um have actually been lucky here in vietnam that we only had a few months of it and um, with one brief um going back to it right now um so i would like you to think about what kind of steps did you use? So you just press um, quickly the plus button. You don't have to put your name, it can be anonymous. And just saying, okay, in my teaching or in my experience, I actually really used, for example, creating a sense of urgency, or I really used uh, building a guiding coalition uh, and so on. So um, if you wanna have more, you can press on the link here and find out more what they exactly mean. So I'm gonna maybe give you about five minutes and five yeah five to seven minutes we see how we go actually and yeah and then just add on here what you think what you used um and then what you also find most important so maybe something you didn't use but you would find very very important to use all right so i'm just gonna mute my mic for a second and um yeah and then we're gonna come back to it in about five minutes We'll get you the link into the chat, um, Marie, if you can place that in there, possibly.
Right, another two minutes or so, um, and then I'm gonna move on with the presentation. Okay, so I'm going to move back to my presentation. Feel free to add on to in the Padlet if you'd like to. And it's gonna, I'm going to try to download it uh, into a PDF and then add it to the resources for the workshop after the talk. So you have actually a good idea what's what. So the reason why we did this right now um, was actually that I wanted you to see, when you see the results, that you have actually a good idea what other teachers have said or what administrators have said. So when you look at our results, we also split them into two sections. We split them in the steps that teachers use, so administrators use, educators use, and uh, we split them into important steps as well. So the same what you did right now. So when you looked at the 16 educators that were interviewed, um, you can see that the creating a sense of urgency, 13 of them said that it was actually very, um, very much used. And um, most of them were saying that it's because of the situation actually. Um, the other one that was used for most people was generating short-term wins. It was 11 uh, was out of 16 were saying that um, they were using short-term wins um, as a good strategy. Um, the next one was that um, action was enabled by removing barriers. There's nine out of 16 that said that this was the case. And then in between instituting the change and building a guiding coalition, coalition there's only seven actually. So we already have down in our samples. Um, in our people, in our educators, uh, and the rest, um, a strategic vision. Only two said that this was used, um, and the volunteer army. Also, there's only three people that said that this was used. And uh, now, compared to what people found important, it's actually quite interesting to look at it. Um, when we look at building a guiding coalition, um, generating short term wins, and former strategic visions, it, uh, is the three that are the most important. So when we go back one more time and look at um, uh, strategic vision that was the one that was not used at all or basically not used yeah from only two people said they they used it um and 
eight people found it very important. So I think that's a very important finding just for us. If you, if you have to move back online, if you're still online, if the change is coming, it's all about changes in education. So what can we do about those changes and what can we actually, how can we follow them up? Um, very important also short-term wins always, um, guiding coalition, what people did not find so, so important is sustaining the acceleration and instituting the change. So um, I think those are things that are really, really interesting to look at as well when we look at the importance of steps. So um, this is in brief our um, one part of our present of our PA, of our master's thesis. And so um, in the references here, I, I will post those links also on the Wuva app so you can have them and then uh, in the chat over here as well. Now when we finished, you can have our whole inside thesis if you'd like to and read on uh, read about it. Um, uh, over here it's published and Carter's website that you just had and worked on. You will maybe ask why we chose this topic and um, what it what it made us um, help or what what helped us actually what gave us the idea. For us it was really important to actually merge two big areas. Education is usually standing on their own. It's not really um, merged with um, with business, although it is a business to a certain point, especially for us in international schools, it's definitely a business and it's often run as a business, but um, the models don't really collide. So what we looked at was um, when a big change like this happens, what could be helpful from the business world where, it's where this is happening all the time. And uh, so we looked also, if you're interested in online um, and learning theories and online learning and so on, that was the other two questions that were actually focusing a little bit more on the learning, the teaching and learning. And um, this uh, one question was actually focusing more on the implementation of home-based learning. Okay, so that's basically the presentation, question and answers, comments. Um, here's my contact information. I'm gonna leave this one up. Um, Comments, I would obviously like to know a little bit what kind of experiences you have with change management education. Like, do you use any models at your schools? Um, have they been mentioned to you? Um, what has happened in your schools? Home-based learning, is it useful to have a change management process in education? Is it not? So those kind of the questions that I would like to know from you, but also you can start a different conversation. You can ask me anything else about the rest of the thesis if you'd like to. And yes, well, thank you so much. Um, it's five minutes left, so we have a little bit of time to either complete the, the Padlet or have a little conversation. So I'm going to look at um, the chat quickly. So let me just move out of the... Okay, any questions from anybody? I think, um, uh, Marie, I think one question that comes to my mind, oh, uh, we have a question here actually from Hannah. How would this model look for small changes versus institutional wide changes? Um, well, you can take out, I mean, it's always a, mod, a model is, in my opinion, also made by um, what, you, what you make out of it. So it's not, a, it's not very strict to follow. Um, I think the steps also what uh, Katza was saying now in his emergency uh, implementation that the steps can also be replaced. So they don't have to be linear. So in case you say, okay, the urgency has happened already. I don't need this one any longer. There's certain steps and we saw in our Padlet and uh, in, our, um, in our research actually that certain steps are deemed more important than other ones. So you can just take a few of those steps in my opinion and then use those if you feel like, okay, I would like to have a guiding coalition. So let's use a guiding coalition, for example, and make up on certain of those steps. So let's start with a strategic vision because everybody needs to have a vision to have a good idea and then just use certain of those steps that you find are lacking. So that's my personal opinion, what we found out from the research, what could be um, for smaller changes. I hope that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> No, absolutely. That to know that the it's not a, just a simple, you know, linear model. That because again, like with COVID, we had a lot of variables that we did not know, and they were changing almost on a daily basis. So, mm -hmm. um, being able to have a 
uh, Cotter's model here to help us to make sure that we look at all these areas. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Anyone else with a question? No? All right. Well, um, not everybody knows this. I, I had the pleasure of interviewing Marie beforehand. She has a young baby. Uh, she did this presentation while also on maternity leave. So <laughs> I know it's I know you're a busy woman right now, um, busy mother. And we thank you so much uh, from the VTC committee for presenting your research, your thesis on this. Uh, we thank you for your time, um, and uh, we thank you all for attending our VTC workshop um, today, and we thank you when we, we will put, post all of these videos online through the Whova conference app. If you'd like to um, continue the conversation with Marie, if you want to do a little bit more reading on what she has done, you can find that on our conference app and continue the conversation. So. Uh, a little round of applause for Marie. Thank you so much for. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.